ब्लीडिंग antepartum intrapartum or postpartum from uterus and genital tract during pregnancy and peripartum period massive obstetric hemorrhage is defined as blood loss of greater than 1500 ml from uterus or genital tract uh, decrease in hemoglobin of greater than 4 g per deciliter a uh, transfusion equal to 4 units of blood massive obstetric hemorrhage can be classified into three types that is antepartum intrapartum and postpartum antepartum hemorrhage is hemorrhage occurs after 24 weeks of gestation until the onset of labor intrapartum hemorrhage is the postpartum hemorrhage primary postpartum hemorrhage and secondary postpartum hemorrhage primary postpartum hemorrhage is hemorrhage that occurs within 24 hours of delivery secondary postpartum hemorrhage occurs greater than 24 hours after delivery up to 12 weeks postpartum uh, causes causes of antepartum hemorrhage could be placenta previa placental abruption uh, rupture uterus or coagulopathy intrapartum hemorrhage uh, includes injury to genital tract during vaginal delivery postpartum hemorrhage it includes four t's that is uh, torn trauma could be due to tissues and thrombin uterine atony trauma to the genital tissues retained to placenta and coagulopathy risk factors of uh, postpartum hemorrhage could be patient factors obstetric factor and surgical factor patient factor age greater than 30 years of age obesity anemia von willebrand disease uh, multiparity multiple gestation and pyrexia and labor obstetric factors includes a previous history of pph prolonged uh, stage 3 labor placenta previa placental abruption retained placenta polyhydramnia fetal macrosomia preeclampsia surgical factors includes forceps delivery pacum delivery episiotomy perineal uh, rupture and uh, emergency lscs penal sutures and emergency lscs that's the physiology uh, the uterus and placenta receives 500 to 800 ml of blood per minute through low resistant network of blood vessels which facilitate placental blood flow the physiology of postpartum hemostasis depends primarily on mechanical events mediated by hormones oxytocin and prostaglandins which facilitate strong uterine muscle contraction third stage contractions are powerful and prolonged stopping the placental flow and thus facilitating the separation of placenta and membranes secondary mechanism involves hemostatic mechanism during and after placental separation involves contraction of muscle sheath around the spiral arteries this lead to the retraction of uterus causing mechanical occlusion of arterioles facilitating the platelet plug formation coagulation ca- cascade activation and pulmonary excess diagnosis early signs of bleeding mimic the normal physiological changes of uh, pregnancies like dilutional uh, anemia increase in heart rate and increase in respiratory rate so the warning signs of significant maternal hemorrhage that aids the diagnosis are uh, tachycardia tachypnea hypotension pallor poor urine uh, cardiotropography changes delayed appetite and depressed level of consciousness tachycardia may be the first and only sign of hemorrhage until 30 to 40% of circulatory <laughs> circulating blood volume has been lost after which hypotension and peripheral vasoconstriction takes place in antepartum hemorrhage signs of fetal distress due to hypoperfusion may precede the maternal compromise management management of obstetric hemorrhage should be focused on hemodynamic stability of mother and expedited <laughs> delivery of baby ensuring adequate uterine tone maintenance of hemodynamic stability aggressive monitoring with early replacement of coagulation factors and treating the causative factors common steps involved are early recognition of warning signs of hemorrhage call for help uh, patient to be put in left lateral head down position 100% oxygen supplementation two large bore iv cannulas has to be inserted aggressive volume resuscitation right uh, using a rapid infuser pressure bags in ot theater uh, blood sample for assessment of uh, cbc coagulation rft blood grouping uh, typing and we need to arrange for blood products 4 to 6 units of prbc and ffp 
and we have to continuously uh, monitor the vitals and plas placement of urinary catheter for urine output monitoring, blood warmer and a warming blank blanket to prevent hypothermia in case of severe ongoing bleeding, activation of massive transfusion protocol, uh, insertion of uh, arterial line for invasive BP monitoring, CVP for rapid fluid and blood replacement and also for vasopressor administration. Frequent sampling of blood for frequent assessment of hemoglobin concentration, hematocrit concentration, coagulation profile, and ABG anal analysis. Point of care uh, testings like TEG and Rotom guides appropriate estimation of blood components that will be, need to be administered. Blood products used in uh, massive uh, obstetrical uh, in uh, uh, massive obstetrical hemorrhage recommendation is to use a packed red blood cells and FFP in the ratio of one is to one with the early usage of platelets. If a uh, cross matched specific blood is unavailable, O negative blood can be used. Fibrinogen replacement with the FFP and cryoprecipitators can be done. Uh, so, for age, uh, where the collection and reinfusion of blood loss during uh, surgery. Uh, so, the blood, uh, fr uh, blood from the surgical field is pro uh, processed. Two separate suction is used, one for the separation of amniotic fluid and one for the separation of blood. And it also has leukocyte uh, depletion filter, which uh, which does the effective clearance of fetal squamous cells, cytokines, and other coagula coagulopathic mediators. It limits the need for uh, uh, allogenous blood donation. Uh, and then factor 7A, uh, it, it, it is a lost result in obstetric hemorrhage. It is also used in coagulopathy. Uh, it stimulates the factor 10. Uh, it is quite expensive. Uh, correction of thrombocytopenia, hypo, hypofibrinogenemia, and acidosis prior to factor 7A, uh, prior to administrating factor 7A. And then the ta target massive, massive transfusion goal should be hemoglobin should be greater than 8 gram per deciliter, hematocrit should be greater than 30%, platelet should be greater than 1 lakh, fibrinogen should be greater than 200 gram per deciliter, INR should be less than 1.5. Uh, treatment of uh, uterine atony, uh, pharmacological and non-pharmacological methods. Uh, in, pharmaco uh, a, uh, in pharmacological method, the first line of drug is oxytocin. That is one to four inter uh, international unit of IV bolus for greater than 30 seconds, followed by five to 15 international uh, uh, unit per hour of infusion. Uh, we can also use carbatocin, which is a synthetic analog of oxytocin. Uh, the dose is 100 microgram, which to be administered over uh, 30 seconds to one minute IV or IM. Uh, second line of drug is methyl ergometrin. Uh, uh, that is a dose of 200 microgram IM or slow IV. Uh, and then we can use carboprost, which is a synthetic PGF2 prostaglandin analog. Uh, 250 microgram IM or intramyometyl can be administered with a maximum dose of 2 milligram. And then misoprostol. Uh, sublingually 400 to 600 microgram can be administered orally 400 to 600 microgram 800 to 1000 microgram per rectum we can also use tenoxamic acid which is an antifibrinolytic which competitively inhibits the conversion of plasminogen to plasmina uh, the dose is 1 gram at the rate of 100 milligram per minute over 10 minutes with a repeat dose of 1 gram after 30 minutes if required uh, coming to non-pharmacological management that is surgical treatment option includes intrauterine balloon tamponade. Uh, the balloon catheter such as Rusk or Bakri or Singstasen, Blackman tube or even Foley's catheter or used in uterine cavity for the tamponade. Uh, we can also uh, put a uterine compression suture that is B-Lin sutures. Pelvic vessel ligation can also be done. Uh, and then uh, bilateral iliac artery balloons may be placed selectively and the selective uterine arterial embolization can also be done. And then hysterectomy, peripartum total or subtotal hysterectomy as a life measure, a life saving method should be considered early if alternative measures fail to achieve hemostasis, especially in case of uterine atony and adherent placenta. Choice of anesthesia. The critical role in surgeon anesthesiologist relationship has been shown to improve quality of care and uh, care and patient safety. Neuroxyl anesthesia. Uh, epidural or spinal or combined uh, spinal epidural can be planned if patient is hemodynamically stable without active bleeding or intravascular volume deficit. Regional anesthesia provides rapid and profound analgesia and avoid risk associated with general anesthesia. However, potential for sudden hypotension if extent of hemorrhage is underestimated. Always patient should be explained about uh, possibility of conversion of neuroaxial to general anesthesia. General anesthesia is preferred in hemodynamically unstable patient requiring urgent cesarean section, patients with coagulopathy, unanticipated difficult airway, 
severe hypotension who may require airway protection adequate pre oxygenation followed by rsa with endotracheal intubation is the gold standard choice of induction uh, dive in the uh, induction dive in the, the choice of induction agent would vary according to the hemodynamical stability of patients volatile agents depresses the uterine contractility in dose dependent manner uh, risk of ga includes airway compromise uh, failed intubation uh, aspiration and failed extubation summary early recognition of risk factors estimating extent of blood loss initiation treatment timely and readiness of multidisciplinary team are important in preventing the adverse incident and sequelae women at risk for severe blood loss should be identified in antenatal visits uh, duly supported by radiological examination and refer to higher tertiary care uh, unit to improve the outcome that's all sir excellent so covered almost all the points in a very rapid express uh, presentation uh, very fast and uh, because you have probably made a red bit again and again uh, made a thorough impression in your mind present it very nicely uh, uterine rupture does it come under antepartum hemorrhage or intrapartum hemorrhage uh, rupture uterus antepartum hemorrhage sir. Is the antepartum? When will it happen during labor or before labor? Uh, what are the causes during of the uterine rupture? During labor, sir. Uh, uh, yes. Because of the hyperstimulation of uterus, not recognized and the natural delivery allowed. Then the uterus goes on stretching and gives way. Or a previous cesarean section given a trial yes, vaginal sir. during the second delivery. That is the time it will happen. So, uterine rupture belongs to intrapartum hemorrhage, not antipartum hemorrhage. Okay, so that's yes, one correction is there. Yes. And uh, what is the normal heartbeat in a pregnant woman? Is it higher than a non-pregnant woman, or it is uh, not yes. equal to a non-pregnant? Twenty percent higher than the non-pregnant. Higher than the yes. non-pregnant woman. So, how to distinguish yes. whether it is due to Hemorrhage, or it is due to the natural physiological increase, the tachycardia that is present. Sir, along with the presenting complaints and associated uh, tachypnea mm. and uh, 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 blood pressure, so sir, there is any hemorrhage. What, is, yes, what are the classifications of the classes of hemorrhage? Class there one, are class four classes. Class 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 yes, four. Sir. Compensated, mild, moderate, and severe, sir. Severe. Uh, mm. In compensated, that is uh, class one is uh, seven fifty two thousand ml of blood is lost. In class two thousand to thousand five hundred ml of blood is lost. Three thousand five hundred to two thousand. More than two thousand is class four, sir. Yeah. Heart rate is less than a hundred in class one. Greater than hundred in class two. Greater than one twenty in class three. Greater than one forty in class four, sir. Mm. What about the BP? How to so identify BP, between class one and class two? What will happen to the blood pressure? Sir, in B, uh, uh, in class one, there uh, it will be almost normal, and there will be vasoconstriction, sir. Mm. Uh, in class two, uh, 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 is the vasoconstriction as per in class one itself or class two? More in class, class two also. Class two also. It will class two is the one where the compensatory yeah, so occurs. So what will happen to the diastolic blood pressure? So diastolic blood pressure will rise. Rise. And what will happen to the pulse pressure? Pulse pressure will uh, reduce. Reduce. That is the classical pulse. feature of class two hemorrhage. Yes. Okay? Increase in yes. diastolic blood pressure and reduction in pulse pressure is pathognomonic of class two hemorrhage. Heart rate may be only moderately increased in both for class one and class one may be almost normal because you can tolerate up to some ml of blood loss without much requirement from any compensation from the cardiovascular system. But only from class two, the cardiovascular system does some adaptive uh, process like uh, increasing the SVR and in trying to increase the scope volume by increasing the heart rate. All these things start happening only from class two and all that. Class three, class four, these mechanisms are not sufficient, and further uh, damage happens and changes occur, and patient becomes very pale and flabby and hypothermic and uh, listless and with altered sensorium in class four hemorrhage. 
Okay. Yes, sir. So this is that uh, that has to be mentioned in your answer so that you can distinguish between the natural physiological change and the the degree of hemorrhage that is happening in the clinical point of view. And yes, you sir. have to give a little more importance to the point of care testing. You just mentioned it as a runaway point in your answer. So the text, how useful it is to identify what are all the informations you will get from text and uh, why it is considered as a very important investigation or a bedside tool in a major hospital or any hemorrhage that is happening. Uh, we can measure the platelet function, clot formation, clot lysis, uh, coagulation factor, the abnormalities we can find from the point of uh, text, point of care testing. So the correct collection or the uh, treatment of hemorrhage can be pinpointed from finding out whether it is due to lack of coagulation factor or whether it is a whole volume loss. Okay? Instead of blindly pumping blood or packed red blood cells, you can pinpoint what exactly is the loss or the deficit and correct it so that you can correct the hemorrhage at the earliest point without Overloading the patient unnecessarily with too much of RPGs and other fluids. Okay, so that is the yes. idea of tech, and tech has become very useful in the secondary context of your management of hemorrhage and other major output hemorrhage or trauma induced uh, major hemorrhage, whatever be the condition. Tech is a very important tool that is being used nowadays. And you mentioned lastly about the Emergency hysterectomy to control when all other methods fail to uh, arrest the major hospital and postpartum hemorrhage. The last resort is to do hysterectomy. Okay. Yes. So in that hysterectomy, you mentioned the, the uh, types of anesthesia, both regional as well as general anesthesia, and there the induction <coughs> drug. You mentioned that volatile agents produce. Those dependent depression of the uterine contraction and may cause further atonia. So, what is the ideal drug of uh, induction that you mentioned there? We can use uh, uh, ketamines. Ketamine? Already, patient will be in severe tachycardia. Iopentone or. Etomidate. Etomidate. Etomidate is a good choice. Then, can ketamine stack and uh, uh, hypertension can be nullified by adding another drug with that? Propofol. Ah, you can mix both ketamine and propofol, which is available as ketofol. Okay? So, in any major uh, cardiovascular issues or a hemodynamically unstable patient, remember these two drugs. Ketomidate will be the first choice. Second choice will be ketofol, which is a combination of 50% of ketamine with 50% propofol. Okay. And uh, that will also be reduced, uh, required in reduced doses because there will be a preferential diversion of blood flow to the central nervous system. Cerebral uh, circulation will be more to maintain normal uh, conscious state and uh, activities of the brain because that requires a more oxygen supply. So, patient will go under with a uh, less than normal body weight basis dosage. So you have to give it in a very titrated fashion, unlike uh, in a regular patient where you will give based on the body weight dosage and try to uh, induce the patient. In the, you must be prepared to for post-op elective ventilation. That also you have to mention. These patients may not be uh, fit enough to be extubated on the table after the hysterectomy or uh, Interventions. So, elective post op ventilation may be required, so you must have facilities for that. And as you rightly mentioned, you must refer that patient's tertiary care center is the advice for small centers conducting and uh, labor and landing up with uh, either intrapartum or a postpartum injury. So, early recognition of that because unless you have a, a good blood bag to supply all the blood and blood products. And ICU care where the patient can be ventilated postoperatively. Keeping the patient in a small nursing home or in a primary health center is uh, quite inadvisable. So they should be transported when they are more stable to a tertiary care center where facilities for blood bank as well as ICU care are available. 
that point also has to be insisted so that uh, junior people do not uh, take the risk of managing these patients in a center without facilities and trying to do something this may lead to not only losing the patient causing mortality but also may lead to medical legal issues that is the reason why many uh, relatives you know they uh, stone the hospital beat the doctors and try to <coughs> create a ruckus because of the loss of the mother as well as the sometimes the baby also so early referral is very very important that point also has to be mentioned in some centers where they don't have the facilities for managing these kind of cases okay? So yes, otherwise, it was a very nicely prepared uh, answer for the 